Disclaimer. Please check your playback settings. Ensure you are listening to this podcast at normal speed. Unless you want us to sound drunk. Then play at half speed. Thank you. Hey, babe. Yep, just got out of the shower. All checked into the hotel. Got us a nice, romantic, sexy weekend plan. No kids, just you and me here in Miami. Oof. Yep, yep. Just got all done with the military training, so I'm officially released, and we are ready to have an amazing four nights. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, no, 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 no. I told Tom and Dan uh, that I was going to be, like, deployed for the next month, so hopefully they just, you know, don't blow up my phone and hijack the vacation. Yeah, okay. All right. Have a safe flight, babe. I love you. Bye. The hell? Hello? Are you, uh, uh, Lieutenant Jash? Are you Jash? Yes. What's with the giant box? Don't know, but it's for you. You got your name on it. Fine. Set it inside. Oh, no. We don't take the boxes in. That's all you. Oh, fuck. All right. Come on. What the fuck is this thing? Looks like the label was written by a two-year-old. It worked! My plan worked! Why why did you have us go in duffel bags? Oh, God! No, 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 no. Your idea was to ship ourselves in separate duffel bags. It was me, me, who had the idea to go freight shipping. Oh, for fuck. Let me stop you right there, soldier. Yeah, you think you're deployed to the Middle West and suddenly you can steal my catchphrase? No, 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 no. (laughs) What the hell are you guys doing here? Oh, so, yeah, Dan and I had this awesome idea, but we need your input. You know, teamwork. We weren't just going to leave you out of this one. So you know, Yeah, we wanted to cheer you up, too. I mean, you're deployed for a whole month. That that can't be fun. So we thought, hey, care package, Tom and Dan. (laughs) Okay, and this couldn't wait until I got back... From, you know, no, just no, never mind, just never mind. Oh, wow. Wow, the Air Force really puts you up in the best places anymore. A lot nicer than when I was in. And you officers really do have it good. Yeah, and is that white robe thing, uh, is this a new uniform? Is this like that casual thing that, uh, you know, that, uh, wrap around that Kirk would wear sometimes? Or like that, uh, that oh, yeah, 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 You know what? Yep, 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 this is a uniform. And, uh, yeah, this is, uh, there's a classified meeting going on. Uh, top secret. Totally top secret. Need to know. Um, and you guys can't be here for that. So you need to leave before the, um, military police come arrest you and ship you off to Leavenworth. In a minute. Shipped? Like on a boat? I thought you were in the Air Force. Oh, for fuck's sake, Tom. Obviously, they use the Navy to send people to prison. It doesn't matter what branch. Oh. What? I mean, you know what? Yep. Uh Uh-huh. Totally right. Yep, you are totally right. Now, get out of here before you get sent to the brig or whatever. Okay, but really quick. Out. No, go. Go. Out the door. You know, that's very ungentlemanly of you, Josh. Well, I guess he is super important now, you know, with being an officer and all. Yeah, a little hoity-toity with his new officer bathrobe and his new officer slippers. And is it just me or these quarters look an awful lot like a hotel? Come to think of it, they really do. Do you think the people downstairs know that their top secret meeting is in a hotel? I don't know. But we should tell them about all the classifiedness stuff going on, just to be sure. Just to be sure, yeah! Josh is going to be busy, obviously, with officer stuff, so maybe we should go down there and help him. Josh is going to be so glad we're here! (sighs) Yeah, babe, I got rid of him. No, they mailed themselves here in, like, a big-ass box. It's right here in the middle of my fucking room. No, no, I promise, I promise you 100%, they will not be a problem. I made up some bullshit, and they left a few minutes ago. Again, I promise, they're not going to be a problem. It's going to be just us this weekend. Romantic. Hang on. Josh? Can I call you back? Yes. Do these belong to you? Hi. Hi. Oh, God. <laughs> hey, 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 You're going to hear from the Joint Chiefs. Next time touch me like that, you buy me a drink first. You know what? Iraq looks a lot like Miami. 
Never would have guessed. They canceled my reservation. Deactivated my loyalty account. Banned me for life. <laughs> I was a platinum elite. <laughs> I had 60,000 points. Like a week's worth of free nights. <laughs> well, think of it this way, Josh. Now you can help us with a great idea. <laughs> yeah, let's watch a movie, guys. Masters of the Universe Super Saturday Super Power Hour! Tune into the Fire Pit Podcast on the last Saturday of the month and join Dan, Tom, and Josh as they watch movies based on some of the greatest 80s Saturday morning cartoons ever! Yo Joe with G.I. Joe Retaliation! Yo Joe! Transform and roll out with the Transformers! Transform and roll out! Jam out with Jam and the Holograms. Then take on Skeletor with Masters of the Universe. It's Marshmallow Cereal and all your childhood memories. And it's only at the Fire Pit. Who needs school when weekends rule? Welcome back to a new, yes, you heard right, a new, proper episode of The Fire Pit. I'm Tom, codename Deep Editor. (laughs) Why is everyone laughing? Deep. (laughs) Deep. And we're so excited to have you all back, however many of you might remain, after our long... Long hiatus of <laughs> self reflection. Why, why are you laugh? Why, why is everyone laughing? What, what, long, long, <laughs> deep and long. <laughs> Clearly, on our time off, we've had some self reflection, <laughs> personal growth, also chainsaw fights, and overall brotherhood bonding between friends, but mostly the drinking. Actually, it's just been all drinking. Yeah. We're drinking now. Hey! Hey. (laughs) Welcome back. (laughs) Back and better than ever. And with a new format, launching the Fire Pit Podcast Super Saturday Super Power Hour. Don't worry, we're still doing movies. We explained it all back in the selection section episode. Seriously, go back and listen to that. We'll wait. Do, do, do. Do, 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 done good and now to let us know what we're watching and why we're watching it i'll eject at the last second to josh Whoosh! why thank you balls deep josh here <laughs> damn it that's a better code name than i came up with <laughs> josh here code name the director and uh as mentioned before we're following themes now not people So it's a little different format, but it's going to be a lot of fun. Trust me. We're covering a wide variety of movies. (laughs) Paul's deep. (laughs) It's the best ever. It's the best ever. We got so mature during our time off. We did. (laughs) (laughs) So, anywho. Um, Professionals. (laughs) So we're covering a wide variety of movies. It's going to allow a little bit more of a natural flow in our journeys. We may not be doing the connections, but we have themes. So the theme for this journey is movies based on Saturday morning cartoons or, you know, basically glorified toy commercials. And for the first leg of our journey, it's tonight. So we're running headlong into battle with G.I. Joe. Retaliation, the 2013 sequel to 2009's G.I. Joe, The Rise of Cobra. And now to give us a rundown on the first leg of our journey, I'm going to call in Dan for some air support. (laughs) Thank you, Josh. Dan here, codename The Producer. 
And yes, uh, tonight we're watching G.I. Joe Retaliation. It stars The Rock as G.I. Joe fan favorite and stalwart of the franchise Roadblock. Uh, it also stars Adrian Palicki, or uh, I think I'm saying her name right. Palicki, Palicki, whatever. Ray Park, Ray Stevenson. So a couple of Rays in this movie. Lee Byung Hun. They play Lady J, Snake Eyes, Firefly, and Storm Shadow, respectively. It also stars one Bruce Willis as General Colton, as well as Arnold Vosloo and Jonathan Price. Uh, it's the sequel to 2009's GI Joe: The Rise of Cobra. While that movie got a little, little bit of a lukewarm reception and kind of a lukewarm marketing push, if you're asking me, this movie is based on the G.I. Joe franchise, more specifically the real American hero version of the franchise, which was really popular in the 80s. For fans of the original cartoon or the original franchise, Cobra's plots always involved world domination, and it never really got that vibe from the first movie. So the sequel had hoped to bring in more named Joes, more action, and raise the stakes a little higher. But... Did it work? Well, it has a wonderful score of 29% on Rotten Tomatoes, an audience score of 48, uh, a 6 out of 10 on IMDb, so I guess it really didn't. It made a little money, though. It had a budget of 135 to 155 million and made 375 at the box office. So it did make some money, but not nearly as much as the Transformers movies were making at the time. More on those movies later. So as a result, the G.I. Joe franchise has been a little bit in the start stop phase ever since 2021. Or, I mean, ever since this movie came out, I should say. 2021 saw a soft reboot, or maybe even a full reboot, Snake Eyes, come out to more or less the same critical reception. I don't have it pulled up, but I think it has like a 49% on Rotten Tomatoes. So, or no, it has like 30 some percent. So, it was marginally better than this one, I guess, according to critics. Um, 1% better is still better. Yeah, so that movie came out. It was a little bit of a reboot of the G.I. Joe franchise, uh, the movie franchise anyways. Currently, the franchise... Uh, the people who own it, which is Hasbro, has made it basically just said, fuck it. And now they're just trying to work them into the Transformers film franchise. We'll see how that goes for them. But I gave a little bit of it, but uh, I do have a little bit of trivia about the movie. Do you guys want to hear it? I would absolutely love to hear this. Yes. yes. Trivia. Trivia. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to spoil a little bit of the movie here. Uh, so if uh, you don't want to be spoiled, skip ahead a little bit, but I am going to spoil so Channing Tatum was one of the only returning actors from the first one outside of Arnold Vosloo, who plays Zartan and Jonathan Price, who plays the president slash Zartan in disguise. But Channing Tatum hated the first one, hated it. Uh, he hated the script. He hated the directing. He hated all of it. But at the time, he was kind of a newer actor in Hollywood, didn't really want to ruffle too many feathers. So he didn't make too much of a stink about it, but he tried his darndest to get out of the sequel. He didn't think he had enough pull until another movie called Magic Mike came out. So Magic Mike makes Channing Tatum quite popular, even more popular than he was already. For good reason. Yeah. <laughs> more like six to eight good reasons. Thank you, Balls Deep. <laughs> yeah. You're, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, <laughs> anyways, Channing Tatum asked the director and the writers or whoever to kill him. Not him in real life, but dude, he was like, don't just kill me. I just kill me now. Yeah. Like he's like, he don't want, he doesn't want to do this film. He just like, he doesn't want to do it in any way, shape or form. They tried their darndest to get him to be a bigger part of this film, but he just wanted nothing to do with it. But he was contractually obligated to be in the sequel. But since he had a little bit more weight behind his words now, because of his success with magic Mike and all that, he was able to say, just kill the character. Cause I don't want to do these movies anymore. So, they killed him. They just, they killed Channing Tatum. Um, yeah. They didn't kill Channing Tatum. They killed Duke. So <laughs> they um, just killed Channing Tatum. That's what, right back and shot. that's that's what we thing. never got a magic Mike two or three yeah. magic Mike three doesn't exist. <laughs> Today I learned there's two and three. Um, oh, I so, thought they just killed him off because either money reasons or they just wanted to be like shocking. So the rock could have more screen time and such. No, uh, the script was retooled to feature Roadblock a little bit more. Like, Rock was going to be very much a secondary character, kind of like how he is in the Fast and the Furious franchise. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess I, you could say now the Rock is definitely a main character in the Fast and the Furious franchise. But when he first came into the Fast and Furious franchise, he was definitely playing 
Robin to Vin Diesel's Batman. You know what I mean? Like he's definitely the second character. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, but the script was just retooled to make Roadblock Rock's character more of a big deal in the movie. Uh, yeah, but then Duke is killed off. So um, that was that was kind of a big deal. So again, this movie's a sequel, but it's also kind of sort of a softish reboot. At least they tried because almost none of the returning actors from the first one came back. Mm-hmm. The first one also had Joseph Gordon-Levitt as uh, Cobra Commander, basically. Mm-hmm. It also had, um, oh, uh, Doctor Who guy. Uh, oh, um, uh, Eccleston. Yeah, Chris Eccleston was Destro. Sienna Miller, I would think, was Baroness. And um, uh, Rachel something or other was uh, Scarlet. And they just, they, none of them came back. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only two, the only ones that came back, oh, I'm sorry, I missed one. Uh, B... Leon Hung, I hope I said his name right, uh, came back as uh, Storm Shadow. And Ray Park as Snake Eyes. They were also in the original one. I, my mistake. Don't forget, don't forget Tom's favorite actor, Randy Quaid, was General Hawk. <laughs> yes, that's right. Randy Quaid was in, was in G.I. Joe in General Hawk. <laughs> See, I don't know anymore if that's actually Randy Quaid or Dennis Quaid now. I'm so confused. <laughs> yes, you are. It. It was Dennis Quaid that was in it. But our longtime <laughs> listeners know Tom doesn't know the difference between Dennis Quaid and Randy Quaid. <laughs> when have the two ever been in the same room together? That's all I'm saying. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. But that's the biggest bit of trivia about this film was that Tatum ends up getting killed. So the spoilers part of this is over. So the audience that doesn't want to be spoiled about a movie that came out in 2013 can come back now. But uh, although, uh, honestly, if you watch the first trailer, they kind of give it away anyways. But um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but this one emph- tried to emphasize more of the G.I. Joe stuff. Like the first movie, parts of the criticisms were they didn't use enough of the really cool vehicles that G.I. Joe was known for in the cartoon. Because, I mean, mm-hmm. the purpose of the cartoon was to sell toys. So mm-hmm. they always had these badass new vehicles that were based on real world military vehicles. But they did things that real world military vehicles can't do. So they tried to do that and then they tried to up the stakes a little bit. They tried to get Cobra Commander to act more like Cobra Commander. Because if you watch the first one, Joseph Gordon-Levitt basically plays command- or, uh, a character from G.I. Joe named Dr. Mindbender. Who then turns into Cobra Commander. It's kind of jarring. It's also very poorly done. Oh, uh, and also this one features more Joe characters, so more of the named Joes are in it, but very few of the named Cobra villains are in it because none of the other actors return, so there's no Baroness, no Destro, so... Yeah, because wasn't um, Baroness, like, you know, spoilers for the first one, like the love interest of one of the characters or some I such? I think... And... I just rewatched it not too long ago. Really wish I hadn't. Um, and I think... <laughs> She was with Duke. Yeah, she was his ex wife or something, wasn't it? Yeah, she was his ex, but she was like brainwashed or something, and like which is not even remotely close to the Baroness's real character. In the 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 eighties cartoon Real American Hero and in the comic books based on Real American Hero, Baroness is very much an evil woman who is the head of I think she's in charge of the Crimson Guard, which is supposed to be Cobra's elite commandos. So Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. yeah, and and she's she's also more or less a love interest of Destro in Mm -hmm. the franchise. So and also um, a lot of people's early introduction to kink. Yes. Yes. If because you she dominatrix wore, kink. She wore all black and she spoke in a thick, like Eastern European accent and all that. So, yeah. And had was, the glasses too. That's, um. Oh, yeah. She, she, all of the fetishes. Yeah. And she was also like a, ma- yeah, she was also a master of disguise, you know? So like, yeah. So I hope this actually... doesn't awaken anything in me. Spoiler alert. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But Thank you, uh, that's bro. All I, but that's what I got for trivia. I'll have other stuff as we talk about the movie as the night goes on. But um, Josh, uh, I did give some of the box office numbers today, but I'm sure you might have something else to add to that. I do, I do. So, GI Joe Retaliation. It was released March twenty eighth, two thousand thirteen. And as anybody knows, anytime a movie is released in like the spring era, they don't think it's good enough to be a summer blockbuster. So they want to try to soak in all of those like sci-fi dollar bills in the spring before the big summer box office because they know the big stuff's going to make the money in the summer. So they don't expect a huge box office during the spring. So G.I. Joe Retaliation has a estimated budget of around $130 million, which its total domestic gross was $122 million. Ooh, so close. So close. Well... Its worldwide gross was 375, so it did make its money back. 
but its opening was $40 million and it ran through July 18th, 2013. So it was, I guess, a moderate success. It was released in 3,734 theaters. That's pretty good numbers. Well, it's yeah. one of those things you oversaturate the market or the thing. Hopefully people will go to see it. To put mm-hmm. that in a little bit of perspective, G.I. Joe, The Rise of Cobra, the predecessor to that one, was released August 5th, 2009. So it had a domestic opening of $54 million and a total domestic run of $150 million with a worldwide run of 302. So it didn't do as good worldwide, but it did better domestically. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That first time we're getting a G.I. Joe film, so everyone's like excited to see it. And the second time comes like, eh, I don't want leftovers. Yeah, but then G.I. Joe Snake Eyes, which came out in 2021. Mm-hmm. And this could also be because of COVID, but it had a domestic opening of $13 million. Oof. Total domestic gross of $28 million and a worldwide gross of $40 million. I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt and say that's a lot of COVID right there. Yeah, because that was July of 2021. So Mm -hmm. the movie theater still wasn't up to snuff at that point. You're talking Snake Eyes' numbers, right? Yeah. Yeah, So, yeah, I I know. Yeah, Snake Eyes came out summer of 2021. A lot of places were still locked down or still doing social distancing and masks Mm -hmm. and all this other stuff that would drive people away from going out unless they have to. Yeah, because I'm sure if you did a compare contrast between snake eyes versus say bumblebee which is also like side character for transformers i think bumblebee did it did bank but it didn't have covid to deal with right and bumblebee did successfully what they were hoping to do with snake eyes which is bumblebee is a soft reboot of the bayformers transformers films like they still kind of sort of take place in the same universe kind of mm-hmm. yeah but they're open to tell their own stories and they've kind of shifted the characters to behave and look more like their cartoon counterparts as opposed to mm-hmm. original creations that they were in the Bayformers movies. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but to put it like why they probably released Retaliation in March as opposed to the summer, the number one grossing movie of 2013 was Iron Man 3. Yeah, I forgot that came out that year. Yeah. Iron Man 3 was released in May and it pulled in over $400 million. Hunger Games Catching Fire, which I believe is the second one, made $395 million. Other notables that year was Despicable Me 2, which was number three. Number four was Man of Steel. And number five was Monsters University. Hmm. So just to put like into a perspective, G.I. Joe Retaliation made $122 million that year. And it was hmm. number 22 of the 2013 box office. Like... There was a lot of good movies. The Wolverine came out that year. Hobbit, Desolation of Smog, World War Z. That's Tom's favorite film. (laughs) Thor, Dark World, Star Trek Into Darkness, Fast and the Furious 6. Ooh. And a little known Disney film called Frozen. Never heard of that one. Nope, never heard of that one. No. Yeah. No. Yeah, but that was a very good year at the box office. So the fact that G.I. Joe Retaliation still ranked in the top 25 is still pretty good, especially for a March release. Like Frozen mm-hmm. pulled in 300 or 263 million and it was a November release. Yeah, I mean, you say good year for the box office, but are those really, most of those really good movies? Uh... Well, no, I love Monsters University. Man is still eh, definitely not as good in my my opinion as it was back then. But it was a lot of solid movies. I wouldn't say great movies, but a lot of solid movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and whether or not they all those movies were good or not, it's still that's a good year for the box office. The box office is the money that makes yeah. the movies. It, was it a good year for movies? That's up for debate. But oh, was yeah. it a good year for the box office? Yeah, definitely. You know, yeah. that was, that oh, was yeah. a pretty good year for the box office. It's not like nineteen eighty nine. Like nineteen eighty nine is both a good year for the box office and a good year for movies. Oh fuck yeah! Because, yeah. Oh hell yeah! Because yeah. That, yeah, that's Batman, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, Ghostbusters two, like a bunch of other movies that came out in 1989 they're like yeah that's a good year for both the movies and the box office but we're getting a little off track on that one yeah so i guess that's it for all the box office we could go a lot deeper into the ball the box office (laughs) but instead let's get balls deep into the production balls deep get on with the production please (laughs) so the production for gi joe retaliation tagline there is no tagline for this one. They didn't even bother to reuse Yo Joe or Real American Hero. 
nothing. Just G.I. Joe retaliation. Summary, though. The G.I. Joe team is framed for crimes against the country. Which country? It doesn't say in the summary. We're, we're, you're left to guess. But outnumbered and outgunned, their surviving team members form a plan with their original leader, General Joseph Colton, to rescue the president and defeat Cobra Commander. As noted, this was produced and created in 2013. So happy 10-year anniversary retaliation, produced by Lorenzo Di Bonaventura and Brian Goldner, both of Transformers and Battleship fame, and who also produced the box office explosion, but critical bomb, G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra. In terms of cast, we've got basically the right people for the right job. Uh, You've got reliable action stars with recognizable names who look more cartoonishly muscular than the toys they're based off of. I mean, you got Channing Tatum, for instance. This is, as you said, fresh off of his uh, Magic Mike stuff, so he's kind of a hot number. How take that however you roll. He, Which actually caused this movie to get pushed back. Really? Yeah, the they um they pushed back the release date to do two things. They had to, they wanted to do some reshoots and add some more footage with Channing Tatum. And two, they were kinda of hoping to bank on some of the popularity now of Magic Mike, because now they can advertise it. Oh yeah, Channing Tatum from Magic Mike's in this. Oh get the ladies in the seats, that's for sure. But either way, I mean no matter what you want him to do, he can do it. You need an action star, White House down. You need romantic lead, The Vow. Action comedy, 21 Jump Street. Really, Channing Tatum, he's sexy, he's hot, he can do it all, he's awesome. And when you throw in Dwayne, the franchise Viagra Johnson as your number two on this one, who eventually takes a place as number one. I mean, come on, look at the Fast and the Furious franchise and tell me it wouldn't be in the red box category if he hadn't been brought in. Enough said. It was definitely on its way to the, the direct-to-video route with uh, Tokyo Drift before, uh, yeah, before Brock came in. Exactly. And, and finally, you got Bruce Willis. And I mean, John McClane as G.I. Joe. yippee ki And you toss in Lee Byung-hun and Ray Park for some ninja on ninja action. I mean, this movie had everything it took in terms of stars and people playing the characters to really pull this off. All, all they really needed to do was just not shit the pants when it came to the creative side. And honestly, they didn't. I looking into this, uh, the two writers, Rhett Reese and Paul Wernick, you might have heard some of the movies they've written before this, uh, Zombieland. Um, you might have heard some of the stuff they did after this, Deadpool. Mm. Yeah, they, see, they know action and they know comedy. They know how to make them work. They know how to have fun with their movies. So when you want to adapt a half hour long cartoon toy commercial into a movie series, boom, these are the guys you want. Looking at it, the only thing that confuses me about this is why they chose John Chu as director. Now, we're going to see more of him later on in this journey, but um, why the studio would trust a multi-million dollar action blockbuster sequel to a guy whose previous work was a Justin Bieber documentary and Step Up 3D, I'm sure it made sense to someone in the boardroom, but really... All this film had to do was be better than Rise of Cobra to be considered a success. And um, was it a success? The numbers say no. The, the numbers say no. Also, the, the, the fact that they're on what? Transformers? How many of those have been made now? Transformers, way too many. Yeah, they're like Transformers. Like they're just Mar- Rise of the Beast or something was just last summer. So... I think they're on like 10 Transformers films and we haven't had a G.I. Joe movie since 2021 and it was only the third one and they already tried to reboot it once. Yeah, we'll see. It's gotten to the point where they're having to reboot it with the Transformers. It's kind of like how they did um, for the sequel to The Man of Steel. They just, you know, had him team up with Batman or the Flash movie where they had him team up with Batman. They're having G.I. Joe team up with Transformers. The more successful one. I'm also curious as about the character they're recruiting into uh, G.I. Joe, if he's going to end up being Dial Tone. I've never heard nothing about any of the new stuff coming in with the new G.I. Joe Transformers stuff. But we're getting ahead of ourselves on that stuff. But no, Nigel, you and I saw this movie the, the first time, like, 10 plus years ago. Yeah. Um... There weren't that many commercials for this. Uh, Yeah, you mentioned that the um, advertising was kind of spotty, which 
I don't get considering how much they rammed the first one down our throats. But I still remember like some of the commercials for it, like when they were doing like the fake military propaganda. It's like the soldiers helping kids and Mm -hmm. doing that whole like Cobra. Oh, this is fucking brilliant. I'm yeah. I'm here. I'm here for this film. Bruce Willis is in it. Hell yeah. We got The Rock. Fuck yeah. I'm ready for some proper G.I. Joe action now. I remember us. I think you had the same sort of um, mentality going into it. So the expectations were high the first time I saw it. Well, as high as a G.I. Joe film could be considering the first one. And I'm, I'm going to say I, I liked it the first time I saw it. I had fun with it. Was it dumb as fuck? Yeah. Yeah, but it was fun as fuck. So... It definitely felt more like G.I. Joe than the first one did. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you had seen the first one, too, so you could compare and contrast. I still have yet to see uh, Rise of Cobra, so I'm still coming into this with the same don't know what happened before this episode. I'm just watching this movie. I do have a tendency of looking back on films I did like and finding things wrong. So I'm hoping that I'm still going to enjoy this. But considering it's the first proper episode back uh, with the podcast, I'm expecting I'm going to have some fun with this episode. Even if the movie just turns out to be a thud, I'm I'm going to have I'm just going to enjoy the fuck out of it. Josh, what was it like for you the first time when you saw this film? You have seen this film at least one other time, right? Uh, Yes, I have. Um, a couple of times, but it's been a minute since I've seen it. I remember not hating it. Like I was not a fan of rise of Cobra. I didn't think it was the worst movie ever made, Mm -hmm. but I definitely didn't like it. So I would say it was a middle of the road. This is a film that I will forget in the next, you know, hour. And so did everyone else. (laughs) Yeah. And then I remember this one came out and I'm all like, Oh, they're bringing the rock on. Okay. So I don't know. You, you said, franchise viagra yep because i was just looking through the rocks uh imdb page prior to 2013 and like he had just been in fast five that was his first foray into the fast and the furious Mm -hmm. um oh he was in doom so that means he's the second time he's been on this podcast what does that make him tom fuck you josh (laughs) actually it's it's, it's like the third or fourth because he was in um uh what was the other he one? Did what was the, the, other the rundown. One? He did the rundown. That's right. He was. Oh, oh yes. My God. He was. So he's a three yeah. Pete. He's a three Pete. He's a three, three Pete. Pete. And we have Bruce Willis in there. We've watched him in Die Hard, so that makes him a two Pete. No, wait. He was in Armageddon, too. So he's a. Wait, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, up until that point, he wasn't huge. He was not like. The, he wasn't the highest paid actor in Hollywood. Everybody knew who he was. So they were definitely hoping to pull him in on it. And I remember thinking at the time, you know, oh, it's The Rock. Um, I'll give it a shot. Like, mm-hmm. not because of The Rock, but I figured if they're going to be hiring him, at least it's they're going to put an effort towards it, unlike mm-hmm. the first one. But I know the first one left a bad taste in my mouth. But I did watch this one, and I've seen it since. And I did like it more than Rise of Cobra. So in terms of what I'm expecting out of this film tonight, uh, I'm not expecting much. I think if Rise of Cobra was a 5 out of 10, I think this one is like a 5.9 out of 10. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Maybe a 6.5 if I'm being very generous. But it'll be interesting to rewatch it again. Like I was just on the IMDb page and they was playing some of the trailer in the background with the snake eyes fighting in the snowy mountaintops. And I'm just like, you know what? That'll be kind of fun to watch. (laughs) Same thing with Doom. We could probably take our expectations from Doom and just like cut out any references to Doom and then put in G.I. Joe Retaliation. Speaking of movies without substance, we're watching G.I. Joe Retaliation. Tonight. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Because I, mean, I was about to say, it's just take out your brain, set it aside, enjoy the movie. And which I think I said the same thing on uh, Doom. So... Yeah, I'm not expecting a lot out of this one, but it is fun to get back to watching movies with you guys because it's been fucking way too long since we've done this. Yeah, it's been been a little bit. Ghostbusters broke us. It did. It shattered us. It shattered us. And I saw that they're making a new one. And no, we're not doing it. <laughs> nope. 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 Uh-uh. nope. 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 <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... That's it for my expectations. So, uh, Nigel, 
How about uh, you? What are you hoping to get out of tonight's showing? Well, uh, like Tom mentioned, him and I saw this on opening weekend, and um, I did go into it with some pretty low expectations. I was cautiously optimistic, though, because I had heard that they were trying to refocus the franchise to feel more like G.I. Joe, because the big criticism of the first one was that it just doesn't feel like G.I. Joe. It just feels like a military science fiction movie. Like, that's what it felt like. It just didn't feel like gi joe the character they had the characters names but they didn't feel like any of the characters mm-hmm. and you know because like i said the, you know, joseph over levitt plays dr mindbender who then turns into cobra commander why mm-hmm. the only one that even kind of sort of got his character right was destro in the first one because he's an arms dealer which is what he is in the cartoon uh but that's it but the first one sucked so bad it was the exact opposite of the transformers films because the transformers movies aren't great but they are fun and they have pretty good moments in them and pretty good special effects and whatnot. But the first G.I. Joe movie was not fun. This one I knew, I felt was really fun. When I saw that, I enjoyed this. At the time, The Rock didn't have the reputations being, like Tom said, franchise Viagra. But he was still a movie star. He was still very popular at the time. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. I was like, although I did, as a big fan of the franchise as a kid, I did question Rock playing Roadblock only because... I don't know. I just, I don't know if I would have picked Rock to play Roadblock of all the characters in G.I. Joe. And also, like, he looks like a fucking super soldier on screen. Like, he's Mm -hmm, jacked mm -hmm. and, you know, he's jacked. I mean, you know, anyone who's not a pro wrestling fan that ever goes back and sees how Rock was so popular in pro wrestling, they can tell you exactly why he was popular in pro wrestling. Because he just looks like a superstar. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I remember seeing some of the promotional artwork or promotional trailers with, like Tom said, about the whole, like, Showing like usual military propaganda stuff and then ending it with like Cobra, <laughs> you know, like this is awesome. So my expectations tonight, though, I actually haven't seen this movie in a while. I can't remember the last time I watched it. I did just rewatch Rise of Cobra. So hopefully that makes it a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I guess I would say my expectations are probably I know it's not a buddy cop film, but I'm kind of hoping we have some like Tango and Cash style fun watching oh, this film. God. You know what I mean? Oh, that would be awesome. Yeah, because remember, remember our final thoughts about Tango and Cash was like it kind of felt like a G.I. Joe film because it felt like they were just playing with all these different sets and vehicles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially, the the film. especially you know? like because uh, what was it we were saying? It was one of it felt like two kids playing in the basement with their toys. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Somewhere someone found their old G.I. Joe toy. So of course they're driving that tank blowing shit up. It was so cool. Yeah. Why does this uh minivan have a fucking minigun on it? Because reasons. Because reasons. Reaganomics, that's why. <laughs> you know, so yeah, like that's that's what I'm hoping tonight. My expectation and my hope is that we just I'm not thinking, I don't think this is going to be a great movie. I don't think my mind's going to change on it. I, I, I enjoyed it when I watched it, but I still thought it was a meh kind of a film. Mm-hmm. So I don't think my, I don't think my feelings on it are going to change as far as like, am I going to come back and realize that this was like some kind of hidden gem of 2013? No, I'm just kind of hoping we have some tango and cash style fun with this. With this Hell film. yeah. Make it feel yeah. like I'm watching toys be toys for two hours yeah and if i do remember the finale of the film it kind of does live up to that with the different vehicles that cobra brings out and the gi joe's doing all gi joe stuff and explosions and gunfights and reaganomics like it's got all of it it's got all it hits all the beats of the original cartoons yeah i think that's why transformers worked over uh, gi joe not to step on future transformers conversations like the gi joe at least the first one from the scenes of it it didn't really it's weird to say it out loud because I'm talking about what is ostensibly a series based on half hour toy commercials. It didn't really respect the source material. It was almost a little shade. There of we it. go. That's those were the words yeah. I was looking for. A hundred percent agree. The first yeah. one, yeah, definitely. It's like uh, terrorist organization, Cobra, all American heroes. This is lame, guys. We, uh, is anyone getting going to take this seriously? Yes. Uh, we'll throw in some super suits. So everyone will be like, yeah. they'll make that the focus. Yeah, that'll, that'll. Dude, the super suits were so dumb. It was so dumb because like they don't need super suits because one in the cartoon, they had fucking amazing vehicles that did a lot of the stuff. Plus they had awesome weapons Mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. would do cool things for them. And they were also supposed to work as a team, which is why one soldier doesn't have like a super suit because dial tones, the communications guy and Flint does this and Duke is the leader. And you know, Scarlet and Scarlet is like the disguise person. And you know, lady J is, you know, she's got all, she was basically like the Hawkeye of um, Mm -hmm. of GI Joe. Like cause all she, she would, instead of bow and arrow, she would throw spears, but her spear, 
spears would have all these different like things to like flash grenades and nets and grappling hooks and all this other stuff so it's like they were a team Mm -hmm. they were a team so and in cobra too it's like did anything make sense with cobra we got guys like they're supposed to be a secret terrorist organization but they've got giant bubble things with you know machine guns on the strap to the bottom of it does it make sense no but it's fun as fuck of course Yeah, I, I, no, I'm so glad you said that, Tom, because yes, I feel the same way. I, I was looking for the words earlier, but yeah, the reason why the Transformers movies have been mostly successful, not critically successful, but they do make bank and the fans do seem to enjoy the movies overall mm-hmm. is that it feels like from the first one, from 2007 on, they've respected the source material. It feels like Michael Bay, the director and, and Steven Spielberg, the producer, they heard. So let me get this straight. They're giant robots who can transform into everyday earth vehicles and they're fighting each other because robots. Yes. Cool. We'll make a movie based on that. Like <laughs> that's it. They took the franchise, what it is. and just made a movie based on that. Yeah. yeah. Whereas this movie felt like they took the GI Joe name, but they thought the concept of GI Joe was stupid. And then they changed it. Mm-hmm. And like no one's going to take Cobra Commander's mask seriously. That's going to be dumb. Who wants to see that? I do. Yeah, I want to see the Cobra Commander everything. Yeah, do that. Yeah, or like they, they, yeah, or like you know the Cobra vehicles, like the Trouble Bubble and the Hiss tanks and all this other stuff. Like those are stupid. They don't need those things. Like yeah, they do. Yeah, the, sure. <laughs> the Trouble Bubble doesn't make sense. Thank you, by the way. I was trying to remember the name of that damn thing. It's like it's a glass dome. It's like there's no bullet protection. One guy with a gun. Boom. He's done. But the best one, the best vehicle, bar none, and which is ironic considering that the sequel here that we're about to watch tonight brought in a wrestler to play a GI Joe character. But it was a vehicle that was made for the wrestler who became a G.I. Joe character as well. Mm-hmm. Sergeant Slaughter. Yes. Uh, yeah. Sergeant Sergeant Slaughter's vehicle that he came with the original toy was called the Triple T tank. It has a wide open cockpit with absolutely no protection. whatsoever. <laughs> it's, like, I don't care how tough Sergeant Slaughter is. And he also doesn't wear a helmet or anything. He just wears his usual Sergeant Slaughter hat. He drives that tank into the battlefield. I don't care how tough he is. One sniper ends that immediately. No, see, but he was so <laughs> badass. He was so so much of a hard ass badass. It just deflect the bullets. His mere yeah. awesome. Nobody, mission. nobody couldn't just watch him. They just like I can't. I just I can't even with this guy. Yeah. I mean, look at that mustache. That beautiful mustache. I can't. <laughs> but you know what? Maybe Sergeant Slaughter should have a cameo in one of these movies. Wouldn't that be kind of cool? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's a little yeah. too old to be in the action scenes, but have him in something. You don't need to yeah. pander to us. You don't. You don't need to member berries. Everything's like no. member this, but just respect. Like this is dumb, but it can be dumb fun. Have fun yeah. with it. Like, when it comes down to like respecting the source material, like everybody dogs on the sequel trilogy for Star Wars, mm-hmm. and I, I've only seen what is it the rise of skywalker or some shit the third one Mm -hmm. it's like i one thing i really remember about that one is how it's like every five minutes they were trying to be like hey 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 remember this this and then they'd like show you red or red five or something and it was just like Mm -hmm. the whole thing is they wanted that whole that whole meme it's like stop i can only get so erect yeah it's like that was nostalgia done wrong and we can get more into this next week when we watch transformers but with Transformers, they did it right. I feel like that's why the first one was such a success because it's like you said, Tom, they respected the source material. The first G.I. Joe definitely did not. And like when they rebooted Transformers with Bumblebee, they went back to G1 designs. Mm-hmm. Which... Yeah, and they went back to they went back to respecting the franchise even more than they already respected it before. The worst of the Transformers films, like Revenge of the Fallen and Last Night, are ones that don't really respect the source material. So the fans revolted and hated them. Oh, yeah. But then like, Transformers 2007, successful. Fans liked it. Yeah. Bumblebee, fans like it because they go back and respect the source material. You don't have to keep trying to change what doesn't need changed. No, yeah. no, you know. don't. I mean, you guys were mentioning Michael Bay and looking at some of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle stuff. I said it before, and I think just hearing this conversation reaffirms that Michael Bay should have been in charge of G.I. Joe. He and really, now. you know what? That's. That Yeah, I can't wait till we do Transformers next week or so, because then we can compare and contrast these two films. Because, yes, Michael Bay, for all his faults as a filmmaker or director or whatever, seems to just have a grasp on how military operations run. Yeah. You know, and like, I guess they should have made Michael Bay like the the Kevin Feige of um, Hasbro verse, you know, the 
Transformers slash G.I. Joe universe because mm-hmm. he did feel like he respected the source material a little bit. So, yeah, yeah. Now, granted, later as the series went, um, I definitely had more problems with it. But at least that first outing, he um, he uh, definitely uh, definitely gave me. Yeah, he tried. Yeah. He at least tried. Like, oh, honestly, you know if I mean? he would have been more involved in like the vision of it helping writing the story and give it to other directors, I think Transformers would have been a lot more successful. Early Marvel versus DC, what happened was like, they didn't have a vision for DC, but they had a vision for Marvel and they made sure to push forward on that with that vision. Mm -hmm. But if they would have had something like that with the Hasbro verse, like I hope they're working with now, Mm -hmm. like honestly, I think it would have been a lot more successful because one thing that fans want more is an intelligent, cohesive story. Yeah. You know, just make it work. Make it interesting. Yeah, I, I, I will say the franchises that are struggling right now, and I'm not, and I mean struggling as in like the fans seem to be just getting tired of them, which is the current run of the MCU and Star Wars and and other franchises. Is I'm going to say the biggest problem with them right now, and it, it is not the quote unquote wokeness of the franchise or the diverse casting or any of that nonsense. Mm-hmm. It's it has felt like ever since a certain company bought these franchises, they don't. <laughs> respect the source material anymore Mm -hmm. they have to change it to just change it and when the fans get upset that they're changing it they tell the fans well the one you like sucked so we got to change it it kind of reminds me of how they made superhero movies in like the 90s and the early 2000s yeah like the the line from the first x-men movie what do you want to do run around in yellow spandex yeah i want to see wolverine running around in yellow spandex you know what i mean well no no okay i got a better example of movies trying to dictate what we're gonna like or not what's that Super Mario Brothers. I have not nineties. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, continue with your thesis, Josh. Go on. Okay, yeah, so I'm curious here. The, the the current Mario Brothers, the one that was just released, yes, stays very true and it respects the source material. It's like, oh, you got hit, so you uh, lose your power, or whatever. You know, it's like there's Mushroom Kingdom. It looks like the fucking video game. Right. So mm-hmm. we're all excited. You see the Yoshi Easter eggs here and there. You get the sounds like when Bowser's playing the piano. It's the da na 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 na. You know when he's underground and whatnot. It, you watch it and you're like, this is fun. And the movie made a billion dollars, so it was well received. Mario Brothers ninety three. What the fuck? Like, <laughs> like I loved it when I was ten. But mm-hmm. looking back on it, like, why did they have to have super powered shoes? Is that reminiscent of superpowered suits, anyone? Yeah, uh, it's so true. Oh my god, Josh. Why was King Koopa a de-evolved dinosaur? Like, don't I get me know. wrong, Dennis Hopper ate all of the scenery in that movie, but the Goombas were shrunken headed what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, or why can't they go to the Mushroom Kingdom? Why does it have to be Dinotopia or Dino Hatton or whatever they called it, which is just a run-down, dirty major city instead of this bright colorful mushroom kingdom which has existed since the very first super mario brothers game you know and like yeah. this so the studios dictating or the writers like they, no this is what you want doesn't make sense on screen we're gonna give you something more realistic you don't like what you think you like we know what you like exactly so right there what they did with rise of cobra is what they did with the first mario movie yeah mario mario <laughs> mario mario <laughs> Yeah. It all comes back to Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> Thank you, Josh. Thank you. We've almost been recording for an hour and we haven't even started the movie. Yeah. I think I've said everything I'm going to say about this film. So Yeah, I'm going to keep most of my stuff till we get to final thoughts because I actually need to see it again to kind of get reminded of some things. So. Yeah, because yeah, we kind of went off on several tangents. <laughs> That's okay. We haven't done this in a while, guys. We've got to... We gotta, I'm just saying, you know, it's the first time back in forever. We're excited about this. All right. So, yeah, let's get this movie started. Um, but uh, but first, uh, we'll be right back after these messages. Why is it still going, guys? What are we waiting for, I guys? I, 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 said the whole, I said the thing. Yeah, said it the should thing. be transitioning now. Why is Why are we still recording? Yeah, what's... Oh, shit. Tom, play the music. <laughs> oh! Welcome back.
back to another Gun Who episode of The Fire Pit. I am, as always, your interspersal host, editor, and special covert operative, Tom! Look alive, cadet! You think you've got what it takes to be part of this daring, highly trained special missions force? Well, I've got just the mission to prove you've got what it takes. Can you help me file my taxes? I accidentally crashed the base server while mining for crypto last year, and I'm trying to see if I can't write it off as a business expense. And thank you for filing in with us here at the Fire Pit. Best of all, welcome to the start of our first new journey of the season! And we're ready to power our way through to Masters of the Universe! It's all the fun of your favorite Saturday morning cartoons with our Super Saturday Super Power Hour without any of the hassle of waking up at 7 a.m. But speaking of getting up, let's check in on the team to see what it is they're getting up to with their latest scheme. Tune in next week for another exciting episode of... So, what do you think? Pretty awesome, right? Constable Guillotine. Yes. About a superhero who fights evil? Yes. During the French Revolution. Yes. Which is also in the future. And in space. Well, it's not always in space. Mostly in space. Space adjacent. And it says here that he dispenses justice with his trusty sword. Guillotine sword. It's a guillotine. Yeah, it's like yeah, a yeah, sword it's that a, yeah. it's a it's thing like that, you know, a, has a sword. all it's part like of the brand. It forms into a guillotine. Very it's a thing. It's yes. very integral to the character. It's Huge all part important. of the branding. Yeah. But tasteful. So, is the guillotine a sword, or is this sword a guillotine? Yes. yes. Why the French Revolution? Well, I mean, what's more freedom than the French Revolution? The American Revolution? Josh, Josh, they didn't have guillotines in the American Revolution. He has a point. I can see that you have mandated here no less than one decapitation or dismemberment per episode. Yeah, but it's not like we're killing anyone. Yeah, but they're all robots! Well, technically, he doesn't really figure that out until after he tries to kill one of them. Yeah, but, like, who's gonna get mad about a thing like that? I also cannot help but notice that the majority of your branding here is incredibly guillotine and razor blade centric. Uh, I feel like you're emphasizing the wrong things here. Yeah. Constable Guillotine isn't just a cartoon about a guy with a guillotine sword. Right. He stands for truth, justice, liberty, the American way. And also murdering the French. Who are aliens. And also robots. From space. French alien robots from space. Who are sexy. The, the sexy can be optional. Some of them can be sexy. The space cannot be optional, though. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Gentlemen, given the extreme amount of violence here... Not to mention what can only be described as blatant racism against the French. We have to ask... Will there be toys? Truckloads. You start on Monday. It was <laughs> I knew they'd buy it. Nothing can go wrong from here. Yes, that's right. Constable Guillotine. Yes, I'd like to pre-order a hundred figures. Well, it's not my problem that they haven't started making them yet. Do your job! <laughs> but if you have a job that you want people to hire you for, or if you have some nifty little toys you're itching to sell people, or if you just want to have an excuse to talk to us in general, then feel free to email us at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. That's curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Just be sure to put Fire Pit in the subject line, as well as the reason for your email. Whether it's to have us shout you out, reserve an ad spot on our podcast, or if you just like that email is still a relevant form of communication in 2024, and send it our way. From there, we'll read it, encrypt it with the most advanced state-of-the-art security software, 
save it to a DVD for safekeeping, and never respond. Look, I'm just as surprised as you that they even make DVDs today. It's not like we use them, but you know, that they're still around. That's, you know, that's kind of a, that's kind of nice. But that email again is curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com, capital C, capital C, capital E, capital I, at gmail.com. And there goes my moonshine distillery. Oh, that's gotta be a write-off. I'm off to explain to the base commander why the boiler was filled with Kentucky hooch. And I'll let you get back to the episode. Thank you all for listening, and as always, good luck. I wonder if Cobra has a 401k program. And now to check on the team to see how they're enjoying their movie. Road block rhymes with rock. Also rhymes with up. I'm at 14 seconds. Yep, yep, same here. We're all synchronized. We are synchronized, guys. We did it! We did it! First episode of the season, no technical difficulties. Hang on, guys. I'm going to turn on subtitles. Oh, shit! <laughs> Gojo. Or is it Yojo? It's Yojo. Then I'm going to keep saying Gojo. Gojo! Tom, do you think we could just do this without Josh, maybe? like <laughs> <laughs> Hasbro. Is that North Korea? That's the North Korean flag. North Korea in association with Hasbro. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we really should have considered where we put that. <laughs> Your enemy will show you no mercy. This is so G.I. Joe. For no reason, ninjas. Having been in the military now 20 years, all of this is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> what are they doing wrong, Josh? Um, working a computer. <laughs> <laughs> Ready, and step! With as much leg strength as Rock has, he steps, he's gotta be crushing the other two. Guys, just hold on to the Rock, he'll lift us all up. <laughs> he'll carry this movie. <laughs> <laughs> he's literally carrying this movie, oh my god. Flo, Joe! Stop it. Where did he get ninja stars? Yeah. Why do we have ninja stars in the tanks? Who designed <laughs> this? That was Frank said they'd never use them. Frank was wrong! <laughs> we, we die because of Frank. But Pakistan remains an ally. Oh, that didn't age well. Nope. <laughs> it's a few words, right? I mean, how much can... Check this out. I mean, now looking at his browser history, he went from being a feet guy to somebody who likes getting pissed on. <laughs> oh, wait, shoot. Wrong browser history. Ignore that. Yeah, this is local. This is your computer, Tom. <laughs> Ignore it. <laughs> Why I didn't we it. take that one? I love it. Just vehicles and vehicles and vehicles. This is so G.I. Joe. Firefly is getting away, but thankfully The Rock has a new G.I. Joe hovercraft. In stores today. Battery sold separately. <laughs> it really floats. Toy does not really float. Oh no, I need to go get the nuclear box. Nuclear box sold separately. Did you grow that goatee on your own? Goatee sold separately. <laughs> Mojo! Oh, for fuck's sake. Hey! He said the thing. <laughs> so the abort button destroys the whole satellite? That's kind of, like, unnecessary. I mean, what if it's like you just abort it because you just got the wrong target and you got to just reposition it to a different target? See, we in the military like to call that army proof. <laughs> <laughs> I love that everybody in there had a career afterwards, Right? Right? <laughs> Career sold separately. <laughs> if they folded the G.I. Joe universe into the Transformers universe, can we now maybe get The Rock and John Cena in the same movie? Dude. Dude. Somebody give me Michael Bay's number. I need to make a phone call. And now, back to the episode. Da 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 The more you know. <laughs> So we just finished G.I. Joe Retaliation. Uh, so, Nigel, do you feel like a real American hero now? I feel better than I did after watching uh, Rise of Cobra the other night. You know, like, mm -hmm. I, this is not a good film. I'm not saying this is, <laughs> this is not a good movie. You know what I mean? Like, it has a lot of 
plot jumping around, like the ninjas part. I likened it to the Batmobile chase in Dark Knight, or I mean, uh, not Dark Knight. Um, Batman v Superman. Yeah, Batman v Superman was like, this is an utterly pointless scene, but fuck, is it awesome to watch? So fun but let, pointless. Yes. Yeah, I'm gonna let it. So I'm gonna let it slide because I'm having fun. But yeah, like I said, I enjoyed it as a sense of like I had some fun with it. The movie doesn't take itself too seriously, but it also doesn't play it off as a parody. Mm -hmm. So I liked that. It didn't have a lot of like self-aware jokes and shit like that. So I liked that. But I don't know. I just kind of enjoyed the fact that they tried at least to maintain or to be a little closer to the franchise, to the G.I. Joe cartoon and the G.I. Joe comic books. Um, they had the crazy vehicles. They had Cobra Commander acting like a psychopath. <laughs> um, they had just massive explosions everywhere. Fireflies, motorcycle transforming into three separate missiles and firing into a door. Like, why does he need something like that? Who gives you shit? It sells a toy. That's why he hate needs it. He needs it because Jimmy needs it for Christmas. That's why Firefly needs it now. So I like that. I like that. It just it felt it did feel like to me like it really was a two hour version of an episode of the TV show of mm -hmm. the cartoon. The kid in me kind of enjoyed it. Like I said, I'm not recognized. It's not a good movie. It's like it's, there's plot holes there's a lot of plot contrivances there's a lot of sketchy dialogue in some parts but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. overall i enjoyed it just for the fun factor so i kind of got what i wanted out of it i kind of wanted a tango and cash kind of fun movie with you guys tonight I, I thought like this is a good movie to come back to because it's it's stupid and fun and it's just kind of a turn your brain off kind of movie and it lived up to those expectations josh um i like the movie but it's like you said, put your brain aside, enjoy the movie, have fun with it. So I did enjoy the movie. Um, it's like 70, 75% Tango and Cash. Ooh, that's a good ratio right there, in my opinion. Legit, like in terms of fun that I had, like Tango and Cash was fucking amazing the whole way through, but it was amazing for the wrong reasons. Yeah. But I loved that. And I like this movie significantly. It's definitely not in the so bad it's great mm -hmm. but it's so good it's okay yeah you know? I see what yeah, you're I saying yeah. yeah i'm trying to look through our history to see another movie that we'd watched that was similar that uh we liked but it wasn't like mm, amazing you know like it's definitely not a destination worthy film no definitely no not. No, no this movie's definitely not destination worthy and whatnot but it was fun like mortal Kombat. there you go mortal Kombat was a fun movie put your brain aside have fun with it so mm -hmm. I would say that yeah. like 75 or 60, 60 to 75 percent Tango and Cash and maybe 20, 30 percent Mortal Kombat. That's, that's not a bad ratio. You know, yeah. Yeah. Like I am not a G.I. Joe fanboy by any means. I like it because it is, a, you know, a product of the 80s and the 80s is awesome. But I wasn't like hardcore into it. Like if we was watching Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles tonight, dude, I could go on about my stories from the eighties for a kid in the eighties during the VCR era, you know, pretty impressive that you've seen like all of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoons. Mm -hmm. There was no marathoning them. There was, you either record them or you were up and watching them as they come out day to day, you know? Mm -hmm. So Dan's rattling off all this trivia and I have no idea. Like that's from the, the show. And I'm just like, it could be. Dan could li literally be pulling this out of his ass and I'm just nodding and agreeing. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> I have no frame of reference, but even despite not being a huge fanboy of GI Joe, I enjoyed this movie because it was just like where the other one tried to stay grounded. This mm -hmm. one was just like, eh, fuck it. We're just going to get bigger <laughs> and bigger. Like, yeah, it doesn't need to be grounded. I don't need a grounded, realistic military drama. There's a hundred of those. Yeah. Give me GI Joe. Like the one scene at the very end when the one dude runs up and kicks the boat driver off the boat for no fucking reason. Firefly. When Firefly kicks, he just he's driving it off. There's no reason to do that. You know, he probably would have been quicker to get out of there. But why not go to the boat immediately to his left that the rock got in that was like twice as big and had guns on it? <laughs> no, let's go with the slow single engine motor or single outboard motor engine. That, that's going to be fine. Not this one with two giant spinning fans on the back or propellers, whatever. And with guns. No, that made sense in the context of the movie. <laughs> I'm like, yep. You think he was being chased by the rock? Look back, like fuck! I should have took that one. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And it's just like the movie's entirely full of shit like that, like unnecessary rocket engines on a helicopter. Yeah, um, like it's like way more over engineered design. Like this doesn't need that. 
Yeah, this is military industrial complex bloat. You had a tank with an extending neck part that makes it go taller. Oh, that's cool. What's the armoring like? Oh, this thing will blow up if you sneeze on it. Yeah. Yeah, so I would have to say that overall, I liked the movie. I don't know. I would probably put it like where I'd put the first movie. Like I said, the first one was like an easy five out of 10. It's middle of the road, easily forgettable. Um, Mm -hmm. When I came into this movie, I was like, this is probably a six. Honestly, I'm going to raise that because I had a lot of fun watching it tonight. I would probably give this uh, probably high sevens. I don't know if I'd commit to a number right now. That's lame. So I'm Mm -hmm. still going to say that though. But I I would commit to a high seven with this movie. Mm -hmm. Like it's not quite an A or quite a B, but it's close. You definitely did some work on this one and I can appreciate that, but you could do better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, this isn't a bad grade. You did good. Yeah, yeah, you did better than you did the first class. It's, yeah, yeah, your sophomore effort was a little bit better than your freshman one. So yeah, but those are my final thoughts. Thompson, how about you? Uh, I, I'm mostly aligning with the two of you on this one. This is, um, <laughs> to quote Dan, not a good film. <laughs> uh, it's canned pasta. It was. It was fine. It was. It, it was. That's t- a good analogy. That's a good analogy. Yeah, Third analogy. Like take a drink. <laughs> yeah. But no, it's like having not seen the first one, I can't say how much better it is from uh, Rise of Cobra. But for the first two thirds of the movie, it didn't really feel like a GI Joe film too much. In fact, it kind of felt like two separate films. Like you had your espionage film, and then you had your ninja drama film, and barely barely tied together with Zartan being Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow's master. I understand why they did it, because for the majority of the film, Brock and his team were barely there. Once they killed Duke, it's like, they're just going to walk. They spent like 90% of the movie walking from place to place. Really, if it wasn't for the ninja stuff, this would have been just the most boring film. And plus, just... The, the time skips, the time frame in this film just made no sense. I mean, they were able to go capture Storm Shadow and then bring him back to Japan for his trial and then, like, go back and meet Roadblock and all of them back in Maryland. Rock and his team were able to get to, you know, the Middle East, to the United States. How long is the time frame in this movie? It makes no sense. But once we got to the last third of the film, I didn't fucking care because shit was blowing up. Yeah. We had the rock with a fucking minigun just going to town. Ninjas. We had ninjas fighting ninjas. Explosions. Snake eyes with a machine gun because there's nothing more dangerous than a ninja with a fully automatic weapon. They got his tanks. They got... I don't even remember what those helicopters are called. You had Cobra Commander slow walking in black leather menacingly. He had the like the silver visor like Cobra Commander should. And it was just was it as good as I remembered it the first time? My opinion of it has a you know degraded over time it's a little more generic actiony film compared to how I saw it in the beginning but said had a blast. Had fun watching it. I would gladly fold my laundry to this film. It's like, look up. Oh, ninjas are fighting now. Cool. So overall, I'm glad we watched this film. For our first official film back to the podcast uh, with the new format. I have to agree with you, Josh. This is definitely not quite a tango with cash for me, but definitely in that same zip code. It wasn't a good film. But it wasn't a shitty film. But it was fun. That's what counts. Like, if you want to go into a tearjerker, you go into a tearjerker. You go into a, an army movie or a military movie that's super serious. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You go into that with that level of expectations. That's what you want to get out of it. If you want to go into 21 Bridges expecting a serious cop movie, that's what it tried to be, mm-hmm. but failed. True. Yeah. Yeah, Jesus, that one. Yeah. You go into Tango and Cash expecting an offbeat buddy cop film that makes no sense. You get that. And it's like, that's this movie. You go in there expecting G.I. Joe movie with ridiculous over the top machinery, um, a way over the top contrived plot. You're going to get that in spades. Yeah. Like, 
anyone who says like, oh, well, the plot is dumb and it's just convoluted and whatever, like the best, biggest, most popular, probably most recognized storyline from the original cartoon is uh, Cobra needs a new leader. So they go around the earth getting the DNA from some of the biggest monsters in history and um, they uh, make Serpentor. Yes, whose equal was only Sergeant Slaughter. Yes. Right, yeah, and that's why Serpentor has a temper, because they couldn't, they, they missed out on someone else's DNA, so they stole Sergeant Slaughter's and put that in, in Serpentor, and then that's why Serpentor's got this, like, stupid temper and all that. It's like, it's like one of, it was like a five-part episode of the original cartoon. It's like, it's one of the most memorable episodes, and it's fucking ball stupid. Like, it's just, <laughs> like the dumbest fucking thing ever like why would you do that it's just it, this was like i said there were 30 minute cartoons designed to sell toys yeah i will say this about the film just watching it um you both have seen the first mo- movie um did this film feel lower budget to you guys it was yeah yeah it definitely it did. I- it, okay it felt lower budget but it was a much more complete film as far as like an example I'll use is Star Trek, the motion picture versus Star Trek, the wrath of Khan. Yeah. Motion picture had this huge budget, massive special effects, but not a whole lot of people liked it. Mm -hmm. Then wrath of Khan comes out and wrath of Khan has like half the budget of Star Trek two, but it's like the most memorable of all the original Star Trek movies. Yep. It's the fan favorite. It's the one that everyone loves. It was a massive success in the theaters. This movie kind of feels like, no, 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 please, God, do not. Now, I am not saying that G.I. Joe (laughs) retaliation is Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. Do not. No, absolutely not. I was Um, feeling the the, uh, comments starting to come in. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I am not in any way saying that they are the same. But I'm saying that whoever got the green, whoever got, you know, they they took, or you're going to do G.I. Joe retaliation, but we're not going to give you the same budget. We had the first G.I. Joe film. Mm -hmm. So, okay, well, I guess I'm going to have to do some more story stuff. Mm Mm-hmm. And I guess I'm going to have to like tighten the universe up a little bit. So I don't know. It just kind of felt more complete. Like it just kind of felt like even though it was maybe slightly lower budget, although if it was lower budget, they spent the money in places they really did need to spend the money. Mm hmm. Like the final battle sequence, way over the top and awesome. The London explosion actually looks pretty cool. Like that was a pretty cool special effect. Cobra Commander's costume looks pretty good. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. They spent the money where they should have spent the money. Yeah. And not needlessly CG melting Eiffel Tower. Some or such. unnecessary power suits. Yes, yeah, uh, just a lot of shit that just didn't make any sense. Yeah, it was it was lower budget, but it was lower budget, but ooh, lower budget but higher quality. There you go. I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lower budget, higher quality. In all I, honesty, I think the movie like benefited from it. So it's you're right. You know, mm-hmm. I don't want to say anything more to that because Dan, I think you hit it right on the head on that one. I do need to go back and watch the first one now, if only to just. I, I'm not even going to say appreciate this one more, uh, more, but just know how much worse it was in the first one. Yeah. Where the first one is just really doesn't feel like a GI Joe anything. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So if they were to, they're going to do the GI Joe Transformers movie combination. You know what? No, I'm going to save that question for when we see Transformers. I've got some thoughts now on the future of the Hasbro verse vis-a-vis Transformers and G.I. Joe, but I want to save that conversation for the next episode. But all in all, I think it's the first show on our uh, Super Saturday Super Power Hour. I would have to say that it was a success. I didn't fall asleep after waking up at 6 a.m. to watch this movie. (laughs) I'm, I'm anxious for the next movie. As am I. I'm assuming you feel the same way, Nigel? Not at all. Okay, then. Matter of fact, this is Dan's last show. We, we thank him for his time and his service, but get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really, uh, no, I'm looking forward to the next one. <laughs> cool. Well, uh, that's it for tonight's show. Thanks for joining us for our first episode of the Super Saturday Super Power Hour. As a reminder, you can find us on firepitpodcast.com. There are links to Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, or wherever fine podcasts are sold. Please like and subscribe to whatever medium you choose because we really appreciate it and it really helps us out. And what would also help us out if you were to leave a review or some kind of insight about the podcast, you know, help spread the word about this fantastic forum we have here. Uh, Fan the flames, if you will. And um, yeah, that would also help us out too. 
And be sure to join us on our Discord channel as well. The link is in the episode's description, or you can find an invitation at discord.me slash firepit. You get notifications of new episodes, and then you can engage us in conversation. And now that we're releasing these on a standard schedule, I promise you it will be more active because it has been totally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's been a riot. We've been talking in there like every day. Nonstop. They, it's just been... We really need some help getting this thing more active. <laughs> you can email us at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Also, like our page on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter, X, Twixter, whatever they're calling it now, at FirePitCCE. Uh, also, trying to get a uh, threads thing going. It's just uh, something the kids are into these days. Both are linked in this episode's description as well. And for shout outs, I don't have too many individuals to shout out, but I would like to shout out my home team of the Columbus crew, who, as of the recording of this episode, has won their third Major League Soccer Championship. So, Columbus, Ohio, city of champions, baby. Now, if only Cleveland and Cincinnati could get off their asses and do something, that would be kind of cool. The Bengals and Browns play real football, so it's a little harder. Only in America. Football is football everywhere else. But who cares about the rest of the world? You're right, Dan. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if G.I. Joe taught us anything. Anyways. Send your America. comments to Dan and Josh. At... <laughs> we just lost all of our international listeners. <laughs> and a shout out to those listeners that are still are sticking around after that. And also to, um, you know, my family and friends and everyone else as we round out the holiday seasons and start heading into the new year. So shout out to you all. And I would like to give a shout out to a new friend of mine I made down in uh, Corpus Christi. She works down there with me. Her name is Elise. She actually texted me and asked me for the uh, address to go listen to our episode. So I hope she's listening to the episode. So Elise, if you are, you're being called out on a super popular, mega huge popular with like thousands of listeners. Um, no, and- longer, no longer international though. <laughs> <laughs> no longer, it's only a, something here in the United States because everybody yeah. else just deleted us. Um, it's more of a regional thing. Yeah, there are literally dozens of you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, shout out to you. Hopefully you're listening to these episodes. And uh, I, of course, will shout out uh, Peggy, the OG friend of the channel, and Rob and Tarek Thorne, who are probably our only listeners still left. No, we'll, we'll probably put, we'll put Danielle in that category. <laughs> um, so uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode tonight. We enjoyed recording it. We're happy to be back. So special shout out to you guys. Special shout out to anyone that's still listening to us. I know we've been gone for a while. It had to be done. We promise the uh, biggest benefit of us being gone for so long will be you, the listeners, because you will have a better podcast to listen to. So Ura. shout out to, uh, yeah, Ura. So shout out to all of our still with us loyal Fire Pit podcast listeners. Also special shout out to uh, a few of my coworkers. I'm not going to name names, but uh, there are a few of my coworkers did ask me for the address and where they could find the podcast. And uh, at the risk of losing all respect and credibility in the office, I showed them exactly where on Spotify and iTunes they can find us. So hopefully if they're listening to it, I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Thanks guys. All right, guys. I, I got my fourth bowl of my chocolate frosted sugar bombs. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. What's the next show on, guys? Guys, guys, we just got done with G.I. Joe. What's the next one? I'm looking through the TV guide here, and it says um, the next episode is Transformers. Makes sense. Transformers always follows G.I. Joe. Yep, yep. All right, well, hurry up and go to the bathroom because this is like like the 1980s and we didn't have DVR or, or, or streaming. Like We don't even know what those things are. So, so hurry up and go to the bathroom and then we will watch the show. There's no time. There's no time. There's a commercial on right now. We need to find out what new toys we need to buy. It's starting. It's starting. It's starting. It's starting. It's starting. I'm peeing myself. <laughs> but if I don't say anything, nobody will say anything. They'll smell it, but they won't say anything. <laughs> Shut up and eat your frosted sugar bombs, Josh. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> We're watching Transformers in the next episode. But until then, I've been Tom. I've been Josh. And I've been Dan. Thanks for listening. This has been a production of Curtain Call Entertainment, LLC. Good luck out there. <laughs>
Good job, Tom. So proud of you. You did it right this time. <laughs> it was touch and go for a minute there. <laughs> oh, I've missed this. <laughs> I have to. Enter. Lieutenant Josh, reports is ordered. Sir? Uh, thank you, Lieutenant. Have a seat. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. LT, we've been very happy to have you in our squadron. Although, we've getting some rather disturbing reports from a hotel in your last duty assignment in Florida. Uh, yes, sir. I, uh, I had planned to stay there after the squadron had left. Uh, I was going to be on my dime a few more days with my uh, wife. Uh, 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 the report we got back from the hotel had reported... Well, I'm not going to repeat everything in this report. You know what you did and his conduct on becoming of an officer of the Air Force. Wait, what? I'll be filing a formal letter of reprimand into your personnel file in addition to a reduction in pay for the next three months. No, sir, I can explain. Like, sir, I that it wasn't Lieutenant. me. That was my two friends. Dismissed, that... Lieutenant. <sighs> yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Cheers, Nigel. Right back at you, Thompson. Ah, so... I think Josh will lie to us again? Nope. Ah, and now we know. And knowing is half the battle.